Hello, my name is Gary Koken. I work for Zebra Corporation. I just wanted to do a quick overview of our Zebra Aurora Focus software and how it could be used to image this uh, particular electronic case part and some of the various inspections we can do. So best practice is uh, when you start an <clears throat> inspection application is the very first thing is you wanna use a locate tool. A locate tool is a tool that might find an edge, a shape, a pattern, uh, some sort of feature. And in this case, I went to the locate tools palette. I opened it up and I grabbed the locate object plus and I dropped it into this very first uh, slot here. So what you see here is a flow chart. Uh, when a trigger comes into the system, it'll acquire an image and will run the tools that you've dropped in from top to bottom in the order in which you've dropped them in. To drop them in, you simply select a tool and drag it to a slot. And uh, you are allowed to configure it here. So in this case, I don't need this tool, so I'm gonna collapse it and I'm gonna hit the X uh, to make it go away right here. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the tools I have programmed. So the very first tool here is a, a Locate Object Plus. If I open it up, you'll see that consists of a region of interest here and you can place it on the image wherever you want, but you're looking for some stable feature. And um, what I've done is I've told the system to look at this Ford uh, full MoCo lo uh, logo, and here is the uh, trained pattern of it. So, and it will look for it inside this shape, this green shape here. And you somewhat wanna restrict where it looks. You don't wanna try and confuse it and you also want to uh, limit it such that it runs fast. Um, but it will find this first, and then, then when it runs, it will send that positional offset to all subsequent tools. Okay, so as long as this shape, this pattern is here, this will pass. The next tool I dropped in is our Deep Learn OCR tool. And how this works is you have a region of interest, and you can place it and size it wherever you'd like. Whatever is in the region of interest is going to be decoded by the algorithm. And because uh, there's some justification and alignment and some of these uh, fields and uh, characters are kind of positioned differently, I've opted to just drop one tool in and place it here. And you'll see I've had to do nothing to it other than position the region of interest. Uh, what the Deep Learn OCR tool does is it will segment each and every character and it will automatically decode it based on uh, its thousands of trained characters and fonts in its library. And you can see as you go along here, what the values on top is what the uh, tool is predicting the character is, and you can see it's accurate. So at this point, I'm just gonna collapse that tool. I'll go to the next one. This is another Deep Learn OCR tool. I've simply positioned it over these characters here, and you can see once again, uh, that it's accurately decoding everything uh, that's in here. I will close that, go to the next one. I will zoom out on my image a little bit, and you can see once again another Deep Learn OCR tool decoding all of these characters. And uh, one more, I have uh, another Deep Learn OCR tool that's up here. I'll zoom in once again, it's uh, decoding all these characters uh, accurately. And uh, last but not least is a, a 2D matrix code. Uh, it's looking for a code inside the search box. It finds one, its value is this long string you see here. Uh, you could individually pass and fail these tools based on telling it what the value should be. And then uh, if it finds something different or if it doesn't read at all, it could create a fail in that situation. Um, what most customers do is they will run these tools and they'll set up a little bit of logic at the end here that if all tools pass, then this inspection passes and the parts allowed to continue down, uh, down the road. Um, what I'll do here is I will replace this part with a different part that um, has a defect over the 2D code. So I'm just going to push this button here, which will re-trigger all the tools once. Okay, and what you can see happen here is uh, I got a new image. All of these tools are green because they ran 
For example, you'll see that the pattern find um, found it's it's barely in the field of view. Maybe what I'll do here is I will move it slightly a bit over and re-trigger. And you can see that um, it found uh, that logo and it's positioned everything under it back into its relative uh, position. Okay, so that's all working fine. And you'll see down at the bottom here, uh, this 2D code, uh, because uh, someone scratched the 2D code, it's no longer passing. So the overall result of this inspection would be a fail. Um, so in the simplest sense, that's how it works. Uh, at the uh, final tab here, you have um, output formatting, and I can turn this on. So really what you have here on the left are all of your tools. And if you are trying to send messages, TCP, IP, or field bus messages out of the system, what you're going to do is you're just going to um, grab uh, and select the particular tool, and then you're going to drop in um, its, uh, its result. And uh, for, uh, for this one, you want to know if it was successful or not. So you grab the success port and you put it in there. Then maybe you want a, um, a tab as your separator. Okay, so I'll put a tab in there. And under the uh, very first OCR tool, you want to know its, um, its result. So you grab that and you put it underneath there. And again, you put a tab after it. But what you can see do, uh, that you're doing here is you're building or you're concatenating a string of the data coming from the various tools. And this will be sent out uh, to uh, out of the device into other uh, devices that are recording and capturing this data. So in the simplest sense, that's what I wanted to show you. Um, once this uh, file has been built, you can do a file save as and give it a name. And when you're ready to um, run, you could just simply go to the word deploy here. And what deploy does is it uh, will take the device from edit mode into run mode. And now it'll start listening to triggers. So once a trigger comes in, it will act on it and will physically trigger the device and give you the results. Okay, that's all I wanted to share with you. If you have any further questions, my name is Gary Koken from Zebra. My email address is gary.koken, which is K-O-C-K-E-N, and at zebra.com, gary.koken at zebra.com. Thank you for your time.